Romans 8. So now there's no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And since we belong to whom the power of life seems to be as freedom from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses is unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law cannot do. He sent his own son in a body like the body we sinners have. And in that body, God declared to enter sin's control over us by giving his son a sacrifice for our sins. He did so that the judge of crime and the law be fully satisfied for us and no longer follow our salvation, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by his Spirit thing, but things that please the spirit. So letting the sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit controlling lines, spirit controlling mind leads to life and peace. The sinful nature is always hostile to God. Never did obey God's laws and never will. That's why those who are still under the control of the sinful nature can never please God. But you're not controlled by the, the sinful nature. Instead, you're controlled by the spirit. If you have spirit of God living in you, remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body dies because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you are made right with God. The Spirit of God who led, raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, Christ Jesus from the dead, He gives life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living in you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by death, you will die. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be put to death. And these are your sinful nature, you will live. For all led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We're... You have not ever received the spirit that makes you feel full slave. Instead, you received the good spirit. Instead, you received God's spirit. When he adopted you as daughter children, now we call now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to form that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we also must share his suffering. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he revealed to us later. For creation looks forward to that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against his will, all creation was subjected to God's curse with eager hope. The creation looks forward to the day when it joins God's children in glory stream from death and decay. Uh, for we know that creation, for all creation has been growing from, in pains from childbirth right at the present time. We believe it is also going, even though the Holy Spirit has foretaste of future glory. As we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering, we too wait with eager hope for that day when God will give us full rights as adopted children, including new bodies as promised us. We're given this hope when we're saved. If we only have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. And the Holy Spirit helps us in the weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us in groanings that cannot be expressed in words. For the Father knows all hearts and knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony and God's own will. We know that God causes everything to work for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. For God knows people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so his son would become the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having called them, he chose them to come to him and having chosen them, he gave them rights standing with himself and having them given rights, he gave them his glory. What? What such wonderful things as these? God is for us. Who can ever be against us? Since He did not spare His own Son, but gave Him us for us, but since He did not even spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, wouldn't He give us everything else? Who dares to accuse Him? God has chosen for our own. For God has given those, God has given them rights to be standing with themselves. For God has given us the rights to be standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised back to life for us. And is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. Can anything separate us from God's love? Does not mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or are in danger or threatened by death? No, for all we're only for your sake, we're no. As scripture says, for your sake, we're killed every day. We're being, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, but for overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Can anything ever separate us from God's love?
And I am convinced nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angel or demons, neither our fears of today or nor our worries tomorrow, not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky and above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is real in Christ Jesus our Lord.